Beneath our feet are hidden fossils that hold the legacy of our ancient ancestry, and the cosmos above may hold the key to our continued existence or the origins of our demise. On a long enough time scale and in a universe so large and full of mystery, the only way to better understand where we are going to and from where we came is to explore and discover. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at these three recent discoveries. Scientists find the world's oldest known forest, dating back 386 million years. Scientists have discovered fossil evidence of what may very well be the oldest forest ever to have spread its shade on Earth. In the quiet Catskill Mountains of New York State, researchers from Binghamton University have uncovered the 386 million year old fossilized root system of an ancient tree, the Archaeopteris, an ancestor of modern conifers. Prior to this discovery, the oldest known forest was at Gilboa, also located in New York State. This ancient forest is still a full 2-3 to three million years younger than the newly discovered forest in the Catskill Mountains. This primeval forest would not have harboured the same sounds as the typical forests we hike in today. Perhaps the creaking of boughs in the breeze, the swaying of tree trunks five feet in diameter would remind us of a silent walk in our local woods. But that's where the familiarity would end. The branches of these woods were barren of swinging primates and wobbling birds in its canopy. Reaching 65 feet into the air would not have given shade even to dinosaurs who would not walk the earth for another 150 million years. This was a time before vertebrates, a time when millipede-like insects scuttled about and the bugs we now wantonly squash had free reign. So far, over 3,000 square meters of the Catskill Mountains have been mapped and scientists have concluded that only two types of trees filled this forest. The aforementioned Archaeopteris, great-grandmother of the conifer, and Cladoxylopsids, ancestor of ferns and horsetails. This forest grew in what is colloquially known as the Age of Fish, but paleontologists call it the Devonian period. This was a time of diversity and abundance for Earth's oceans, an age when invertebrates like the pearly nautilus first discovered shelter in shells, an age that would end with the first amphibians colonizing the quiet, unconquered land. If you could go back to this ancient forest, you would be able to walk from its location in New York State, across Greenland, all the way to Europe, across the subcontinent called La Russia. This is despite the fact that 85% of the Earth was blanketed in ocean, a full 15% more than it is today. This was likely due to mostly melted ice caps and an equatorial climate. Researchers have discovered the fossils of fish among the fossils of the trees found in the quarry where the ancient forest was discovered. This can only point to a flood. Imagine how quiet it would have been as a great swell moved across the forest floor. Insects silently washed away without the cries of deer or bear or bird, the trees decaying slowly in the now salty marsh, waiting for 386 million years to be uncovered. An internet solar apocalypse could happen. Dreams of apocalyptic carnage often conjure images of nuclear fallout, asteroid impact craters, war, famine, pandemic and natural disaster. But there exists an existential threat more sporadic and far less understood. The threat? Our Sun. Massive plasma bubbles are routinely boiling and popping across the surface of the Sun. These explosions are called solar flares, are visible with telescopes and leave behind ropes of visible plasma referred to by scientists as flux ropes. Often these solar flares are accompanied by coronal mass ejections, massive bubbles of plasma which emit magnetic field lines into space for hours at a time. These coronal mass ejections influence Earth's magnetic field and geomagnetic field lines and can be observed on Earth with the naked eye as auroral light at extreme northern and southern latitudes. But these solar storms won't turn humanity into a crisp. Rather, the danger lies in the magnetized particles that the storms carry to Earth. An especially powerful coronal mass ejection 
could potentially knock satellites out of orbit, put international undersea cables at risk, and cause fundamental data routing systems to malfunction. But what does this all mean? Downed electrical grids, blackouts, and the death of the internet. This might seem less destructive than nuclear war, natural disaster, and famine, but the repercussions of such an event may be equally devastating. Airplanes couldn't fly, cargo ships couldn't navigate, the financial system couldn't operate, communication between nations would be almost entirely severed, and vital weapons systems would be inoperative. This is all not to mention the economic impact. It's estimated that a 24-hour internet disruption would cost $7 billion in the US alone. In short, a massive solar event has the potential to throw the entire global civilization back into the early 19th century, except that we would not have the knowledge nor the systems in place to navigate it. Imagine sitting in a dark room with your family. All the hum of white noise has been silenced. The television hangs like an empty portrait, the lights like doused torches. The meat stored in the freezer and refrigerator begins to spoil. Even the electricity that helps pump water to your house, that helps put gas in your stove, could be at risk. You drive into town for supplies, the streets are dark, the stores look closed but for the lines of cars waiting to stock up on all they can. You can't call your family to tell them what's going on. And they can't call you. The police force, the fire department, the military are all crippled. Every institution that keeps order in society has its hands tied and no one knows how long the outage will last. No one knows how long society will keep itself in order. But is this truly a threat? How common are these cosmic events? Coronal mass ejections can occur once a week, or even two to three times a day. It all depends on where the sun is in its solar cycle. But the threat does not come from these routine events. The Carrington event occurred on September 1st, 1859. Sunspots were visible from Earth with the naked eye, and the geomagnetic storm observed with magnetographs. The power of this storm was enough to knock out sections of the newly minted US telegraph network, even starting fires. But the world did not depend on technologies vulnerable to these storms as it does now, and civilization is ill-prepared to handle such fallout. That's why scientists like Sangeetha Abdu Jothi from the University of California are sounding the alarm and drawing up plans of how to survive a potential internet apocalypse. For now, we can only hope that the sun remains relatively tame. Mars may have natural shelters from radiation. Elon Musk stated confidently that his company SpaceX will send an unmanned mission to Mars in the next two years and that he believes humans will land on Mars by the year 2026. But getting to Mars is only part of the battle. There is also the massive logistical and technological issue of returning to Earth, not to mention merely surviving the harsh Martian landscape. Unlike Earth, Mars does not have a magnetic shield or atmosphere to protect would-be travelers from the deadly onslaught of cosmic radiation. And without any artificial protection set up on Mars, how will the first arrivals deal with this issue? One solution would be to send teams of robots to construct structures which would protect humans from radiation. But there may be a less costly, less hands-on solution. Butts are towers of rock characteristic to the southwestern United States and common to parts of the Martian landscape. A study published in Geophysical Research Papers found that these butts may protect against solar radiation and create an ideal oasis for the first humans arriving on Mars. The Mars Science Laboratory Curiosity rover was sent to Mars in 2012 with an instrument called a radiation assessment detector used to detect levels of radiation from the Sun. As Curiosity roamed across an area of Mars called the Murray Butts region, it found a significant drop in surface radiation due to the natural barrier the butt creates. This doesn't mean that humans will merely be able to land a craft behind a butt and start exploring, but it does give scientists a better understanding of where the optimal areas would be to construct some kind of permanent Martian base. Elon Musk's prediction may be aggressive, but the goal is not out of reach.
But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.